Um, so I'm going to facilitate some questions now. If anybody's got them from the audience, I'll, I'll take them right now. Otherwise, I have a few of my own. Uh, and I think they're going to help me out with some microphones. All right. There's one right here. Hi, Monica. I'm just wondering, uh, with uh, David's presentation and Philip's pr presentation, while David talked about 200-mile uh, radii for the procurement of materials, uh, I'm talking about the embodied energy for the precast elements or the, or you know, the modular technology. Um, and you are uh, sourcing all of these units in China. So I assume that the sustainability component would slightly be out of the window because of the embodied, high embodied energies into these systems. So I would like both of you to address this point about the embodied energy and how, you know, the sourcing of the precast elements or the modular elements make it feasible. Um, probably one of the things I didn't make clear is all the precast elements were um, sourced locally in Darwin, only about 10 kilometres from, from the site, so very little transport associated with those. Um, the embodied energy for transport of a 26 tonne module versus a 12 tonne, I, I don't know, David, if it's the same volume um, and it sits on the same ship, I presume if it's carrying more load, it's using more fuel, but uh, I couldn't tell you, you know, what, what the energy content, you know, the, the energy penalties of that would be. Certainly having concrete is uh, involved in the construction, you know, we know concrete is a, a high energy used uh, for, um, for manufacture of cement, so not as, not as sustainable as perhaps some of the, the lightweight solutions that, that other people are doing. Having said that, a lot less steel in it, and steel's a high energy uh, consuming um, material too, so I don't know whether David's uh, got any comment on that based on his studies. Um, well, uh, first of all, First of all, is my mic on? I guess it is. Okay. Uh, if you look at the total energy pie uh, and step back, transportation is actually a very, very small component. It's maybe less than 10%, uh, depending on the system. Um, secondly, um, in, in the system that I was presenting, uh, because the modules are very, very lightweight, uh, the amount of CO2 emitted per ton mile of transportation is actually lower uh, than a domestically procured system if all of the components were procured within a 500 mile radius. So it's actually better than a, uh, a building that achieves a lead point uh, for uh, regional procurement. Um, the question of steel uh, embodied energy in steel, uh, if you're uh, working with recycled content, uh, you can actually do very well in terms of the embodied energy. Uh, and for the purposes of our model, we assumed a 75% uh, recycled content. Thank you. There's another, another question right up here. This question is for David. Um, in terms of uh, type one construction and the fire rating for a high rise building being all steel, as you were describing that, uh, if you could touch on that and, and how you uh, solve that problem. Uh, so um, we do meet type one uh, requirements. Um, I can't give you the details in, in technical detail. This is uh, intellectual property that I, I can't uh, talk about. But we, we developed methods of fireproofing using already uh, underwriter laboratories rated products in combinations uh, that aren't currently tested, but um, we're expecting to get funding uh, to start testing in 2016. Uh, and so we'll go through an underwriter's laboratory's testing protocol to, to uh, prove out uh, the fire ratings for our components. Well, uh, for, for New York City, you don't have to go to UL for New York City. You can go to some of the smaller testing labs like ATI in Pennsylvania. Um, but you do need testing to be done. Did that answer your question? Cool. Okay. You're good? Do you have one more? Yeah. Right, this gentleman right here in the front. 
Hello. Um, my question is to David. Actually, you you actually describe more on the on the UNED, but I'm just looking at the typologies that you presented at the end of the presentation, wherein you had the low rise, the mid rise, and the high rise. So when you talk about uh, making that as a global unit, then do you also think, I mean, is it a holistic module where structure is also included or different geographical location is also included? Or you're just talking about the module and then that, that can be probably in integrated into a conventional system? Is that, is that how you're looking at it in your proposal? Because um, you're mentioning it, about the volumetric unit as a, as a module. And then you stack them up right. in probably four different typologies. But then, does it use the conventional system in terms of structure, in terms of geographical uh, uh, locations? Uh, uh, or no, all, all, all of the structural, the entire structural system is built into the module. Gravity load and lateral load systems are all integral with the module. Uh, is that, does that, as opposed to having an external, like a, a core that's conventionally built that modules are attached to, or braced frames that are conventionally built, as in uh, the Atlantic Yards project, where modules are attached to a conventional braced frame. In the GBM system, everything is integral to the module itself. Uh, does that answer your question? Um, Undoubtedly, uh, designs are going to be location specific, but we expect to develop a repertoire of solutions so that we don't necessarily have to start with a blank sheet of paper for each building. So far, we've looked at specific building solutions in several specific locations. So we haven't done this kind of global matrix of typological solutions yet. But that, that is something we expect to do.